Good morning, everybody. We have no choir this morning. Um, we have a second collection for missions. And the intention of the Mass is for a golden wedding anniversary and also for Ellen and Fred Goff. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Jesus makes it clear in the Gospel of today that our Christian career is service of God and of neighbor. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has been pleased to crush his servant with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs. He shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say the psalm together. May, May your love be upon, upon us, O Lord, Lord as, as we place all our hope, hope in you. The word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep, to keep them, them alive in famine. Our, our soul, soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the supreme high priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a high priest who is incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident then, in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him, 
and find grace when we are in need of help. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached Jesus. Master, they said to him, we want you to do us a favor. He said to them, what is it you want me to do? They said to him, allow us to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I must drink or be baptized with the baptism which I must be baptized? They replied, we can. Jesus said to them, the cup that I must drink, you must drink. And with the baptism with which I must be baptized, you will be baptized. But as for the seats on my right hand or on my left, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those to whom they have been allotted. When the other ten heard this, they began to feel indignant with James and John. So Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that amongst the pagans, their so-called rulers lord it over them, know that, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. No, anyone who wants to become great among you must be the servant, and anyone who wants to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Last Sunday we prayed for God's wisdom. Today we are called to live by her guidance, whatever the cost. The gospel contains Jesus' teaching that greatness comes through service, not by worldly exercise of power or authority. Jesus tells the twelve, that whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We know that the world is far from perfect or ideal, and we know that Jesus' life teaching an example, his death and resurrection give us an opportunity to live in a way that is most liberating, most free, and most loving. To live and to love does not mean to subjugate yourself under the weight of the cross. It does not mean to subjugate yourself to, it will be better later, or suffer now experience peace in heaven later mentality. Jesus challenged his disciples to follow his lead by addressing the hypocrisy that keeps people chained and immobilized, to avoid the, fit, the allure of power and prestige, especially because you are no better than anyone else. Jesus challenged his disciples to follow him, to forget the tiring fight 
of taking charge of being in control. Instead, make yourself as vulnerable as a servant or slave. Again, he cautions, do not become a slave or servant to the way that contributes to the powers that be or even to a simple way that contributes to the deforming of your neighbors. Jesus spent his life and ministry resisting, questioning, offering a different way while fully accepting all the consequences born of fear, control, manipulation, even order in the world. He taught his disciples and teaches us not to tyrannize people. Jesus called out the leaders in his time and instructed his disciples to avoid desiring being leaders who lead and organize through tyranny and using power over others. Rather, he insisted, alternatively, be desperate for a better life beyond the status quo. Be desperate for an experience of life in common where all people are seen and can thrive. Use power not to differentiate yourself as being better than or needing a situation to be safer or knowing more. The foretelling of his own death is a call for each of us to die to our own self, to die to this status quo. Jesus' death was a ransom. In Greek, ransom means does something, as opposed to the common definition of repayment. Jesus' death of self does something for us. His death on the cross between two thieves revealed the logic of empire. When threatened by a difference that did not respond to their power, those in power will destroy. Jesus' death, his servant's death, was the resistance that served as the space to allow the question and offered a different way, a way that leads to resurrection. This resurrection is not a hope in the future. Again, his death does something. His death liberates us from the hold of that deforming control. His death, our undying for ourselves or our systems that oppress, can and does do something. It literally liberates others. Many people we know endure great suffering, emotional, physical, spiritual, mental in relationships, employment, and elsewhere. We need to appreciate the courage with which they live such struggles and the dedication of the many who care for them. Those who suffer little need to be challenged in the spirit of Christ to serve others who find life a struggle. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon to smile it. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for Pope Francis, his bishops, and all the clergy, especially Father Lucas and Father Roger, and give thanks to our Father in heaven for their service to the church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Our readings today are shorter forms of those we hear on Good Friday, which complement the gospel and remind us of the suffering Jesus bore in service so that we might be saved. We pray for the grace and strength to follow his example of service to others with love and compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for, for the, all those affected by the ongoing conflicts around the world, and especially in the Middle East, where airstrikes in Lebanon, northern Israel and Gaza continue to kill and injure those who have played no part in violence and who are regarded as collateral damage by those who hold power. We know that every life is precious to God, who understands their suffering, and we ask that he bestow his grace and peace into areas of conflict, so there may be a cessation of hostilities soon. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As Storm Ashley hits the UK today, we pray that all affected will remain safe from any incidents caused by the high winds which are forecast in the Wirral to be at their worst this afternoon. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember in our prayers today those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, that they experience God's healing presence in their lives. We also pray for the members of our parish who have died recently, and for their families and friends, that they may be comforted in their grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We turn to our blessed Mother Mary and ask her to join her prayers to ours as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, grace the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women, and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord our God, we ask you to convert us to the demands of the gospel. Help us to become servants to one another through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, true your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word to whom you made all things, whom you sent as a Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, Fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints who declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son and the eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending thy spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died, in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a gesture of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
there will be a retiring collection for well missions after mass today. Mass on Friday will be at 9 a.m. and we will be joined by the year eight girls from Upton Hall School. The Mass for the Bereaved will be held on the 13th of November this year. There will be a meeting in the presbytery this Wednesday at 7 p.m. for all those who are willing to help. Details are in the newsletter. Christmas hamper bingo will be on 24th November at 2.30 p.m. There will be a meeting of volunteers willing to help at the event this Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. in the hall. Tickets for the, great, for the grand draw will be available after Mass. Advent calendars, Christmas cards, nativity scenes, and other Christmas items are now on sale in the Piety Stall. Following on from the bishop's letter last Sunday, there is an abridged copy of it in this week's newsletter. Please write to your local member of parliament. In most cases, this will be Dame Angela Eagle, her address and the addresses of other local MPs are in the newsletter. Please remember to take a newsletter home with you so that you can read about all our news and events within the parish and beyond. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, the Mass is ended.